mm -hmm. initial engagement. So if we can see Team Low Gun kind of pick up their momentum, their mobility, it may be a little bit of a better outcome for them as we are now jumping into game number two for the first series of the day. Team Low Gun all the way out from Mongolia up against RRQ Hoshi. Currently match point and a possible sweep if Team Low Gun does not stay on their toes. Yeah, and the balance are pretty similar from the last game. Snowland and Arlot being uh, closed up. Matilda straight away being banned by the RQ Hoshi on the first ban. The mobility heroes <laughs> being banned <laughs> and the uncomfortable RQ Hoshi are uh, showed that they absolutely understand how to use the mobility on their hero to gain maximum advantage uh, from it. And... Uh, We'll see how Team Lil Gun going to adapt and how, how, what is their response is going to be. I'm expecting RQ Hoshi to ban out the Minotaur again. I mean, this is similar to the last uh, match with the bans in terms of RQ Hoshi. Actually, the exact same for both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, so possibly a Minotaur ban may be on the way. It's probably a, a um, comfort ban that they know Team Lil Gun likes to run. So there is going to still open up uh, some of their favorite picks. Maybe we see the Benedetta again. It definitely worked out before. Um, it was very hard to keep up with. Uh, the Claude, if Skylar can pick that up, I think he uh, executes well on that. And it looks like they're not going to ban it out. They do go in for the Navaria, though. We've talked about mm -hmm. the Navaria not really being talked about that much or uh, shown as one of those key heroes last game. But it had a heavy impact, especially with uh, the slow that it was providing and also the massive damage output that the team would be able to input from that, uh, that slow CC. So jumping into this, like we said, a couple of uh, adjustments to the ban phase for the side of Team Lil Gun. And the Gwynevar again, like it's pretty much the same bands except of Novaria being added to this and the uh, Ruby is being picked straight away. So the ban of Ruby last game from uh, RQ Hoshi, I believe, right? And uh, was for a reason and uh, Ruby being picked like, yeah, well, let's see. I'm stoked to see what is so dangerous Ruby doing in these games that being drafted on the first pick and being banned. So I would love to see that. I like the Ruby too. Honestly, it's something that we see in the NA scene. Uh, it's been having such a strong impact. You can flex it to the XP, you can flex it to the roam position, uh, and it does just as well in both. Uh, but again, if they run that heavy uh, mobility composition, Ruby has a little bit of mobility, but against the Benedetta, I'm not sure how that's going to kind of play out. Uh, but you are going to see, again, uh, a similar pickup. The CC will be slotted in for RRQ Hoshi, but this time, the sustainability is going to be this Ferramis, uh, which will be kind of fun to watch. Now, there is a uh, Valentina still on the table, so I'm wondering if Team Logan is going to go in for that so that they can have another realm as well. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think they... Valentina, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I feel like even Faramis would be so much better at the last game, but they went with the Valentina. But you know, about Ruby, it's like kind of hero when you... when this hero play on your side you cannot feel uh, her impact that good but when you play against it oh my god it's like <laughs> it stuns you every single time when you not want to be stunned <laughs> it's keep going <laughs> with the stuns yeah so annoying yeah, you already hero. see the lilia picked up though so they're gonna have early game damage uh this side for team Lil gun uh, they are going to go in for the jungle nice and early, the Mardis. We know he has the anti-CC in his kit. The motor coils definitely can be a problem hitting somebody with some chain CC. And he's overall just a really good jungler for the first neutral objectives. He does fall off a little bit later in the game, uh, which we will have to watch out for. Team Low Gun, they had the Barats before. It was a jungle bully, uh, but it just didn't really work out the way they kind of planned it to. And it looks like they're going to be a little bit more aggressive now uh, with this Mardis, which could possibly open the doors for them in the early game. But you are going to see RQ Hoshi picking... up there yeah and then the kaja is like i don't know <laughs> it's we, we saw <laughs> this hero a lot like you know it, it reminds me the game from the team fire flags when they went from kaja and the build the fleeing time like almost like first or the or second item and uh, keep keep using this ultimate keep ulting keep killing but it didn't kind of work because when it Team fight appears, it's not that effective. It's effective on the solo kills, but uh, with a team fight, like, I don't know. So I want to see how RQ Hoshi is going to use uh, the Kaja because it seems like they are using heroes of two 
their maximum potential. Yeah, speaking of maximum potential, there goes the carry band out. Uh, one of those more prevalent marksmen that we've been seeing this time around uh, in terms of meta. Uh, like the Claude is still on the table. Definitely can be picked up for either side. Uh, we've seen Skylar perform really well on it. I wonder if he's going to try and get that since they are going to have first pick this time around, being second on the uh, and, and on the red side for today's draft. Now, there's still a couple of bands on the table. Looking at Team Low Gun, like I said, the Ruby can be flexed into the roam position or it could be XP. Uh, Either way, they can decide if they want to run a support, they can to match up, especially against the heals that the Pharamus is going to provide with the Nether Realm. Or they can go in for some more additional CC. There is no uh, Diggy banned out, so and there's no Minotaur actually banned out this time around, which could be a viable option if they do want to kind of last pick that and catch RQ Hoshi off guard. Yeah, but again, mobility is kind of like, I don't know. Martis is super strong hero, but when he's like being attacked and uh, he's forced to counter attack uh, Otherwise they need to uh, have some I don't know maybe Rafaela something like that and uh, Because they need to fix the mobility Ruby is not that um, Good as well in this department the carry and the cloud being banned uh, like double double marksman this time they not play around. They taking notes and they're using them straight away. Yeah, they are trying to limit some of the marksmen's available. A couple of other ones that we do see sometimes sneaking up in there is the Irithel, uh, the Natan could be a viable option, the Bruno, the Brody. Nathan. All of these uh, yeah. still some strong picks to be able to be slotted for either side. Uh, I am watching for uh, RQ Hoshi though, having that Kaja, that suppression. Uh, it can work, especially on the Martis, right? He's going to go in for these neutral objectives. If they can mm -hmm. grab him right before that uh, retribution mark, then you're going to be able to see Team Little Gun be able to, or uh, RQ Host be able to take some of these early turtles. So that is something to watch out for. And the Kaja is a counter to the Lilia because the Lilia can use the Black Shoes, be able to get uh, all that HP back that she has lost. But if the Kaja can hit him with the Divine Judgment right Ooh. beforehand, then it'll be an easy kill. The classic, the Beatrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's super strong hero. Still, still super strong hero. Like, you know this uh, when uh, some hero being nerfed just just a little bit. Everybody is like, ah, oh, it's unplayable now. It's we're not going to pick him anymore. <laughs> and that you can see it's uh, not should be not treated this way because it, if it's like minor uh, fix, it's not the reason to not stop picking this hero. And uh, Beatrix is there, and uh, I would love to see. You know, I was actually interested be... with the Beatrix. Uh, I, we don't see the Beatrix that often anymore inside of the NA side of things. Honestly, it's one of the least picked marksmen. You see usually the Bruno, uh, the Aerothel, uh, the Claude, the Carry, the Natan, all usually picked before her. So Ooh. be able to see this in the international scene. Uh, Another we'll see how it kind of plays out. But uh, there it goes. The final pick on the side for Team Lil Gun it will be the Ixia. And the Tamos. Tamos as well. And uh, I love to see Tamos. I, it's like... It's one of those heroes, kind of like uh, Lunox in my uh, perspective, because it's every time it's good. Every meta is good. Like, he's, he's win the lane, he pressures the lane, he's good at team fights, he's good in aggression. Why not everybody picking him? He's good at X plane, he's good at like jungle. My Over team Logan, kind of leading the way for Indonesia up against Mongolia. Revving into the land of dawn. You see it right there. The virtual arena is ladies and gentlemen Definitely support your favorite teams. Let us know which way you think this will go Do we see the 2-0 sweep or do we see a turnaround to even out the scoreboard one-to-one -one team Lil gun up against RQ Hoshi? Yes Typical start on the mid lane here. The farm is trying to burst down the minions and takes as much souls as possible and uh, succeeding in the, this kind of the things so Kaja staying on the mid lane, just showing up the enemy heroes. Is he going to work on the, the Tamus here? But Tamus is pushing the wave and going to not going to the mid lane. He's trying to get the jungle minion, but like you know, the typical start. You know, it's funny. This is the first time I've seen a, a Thomas go up against a CC. So I'm gonna be paying a very close attention uh, to that VOD side, but already some early aggression from Team Lil Gun. Massive damage. Lancelot with Thorn Rose is gonna rush in. One more hit. Zara finds Bruce. But Okta very low as well. Oof. We'll get a double kill. Down goes Okta. Team Lil Gun. A possible secret weapon with the Martis pickup. We talked about 
how much potential he provides in the early game in two kills before the two minute mark. Yeah, this is exactly how you should use Martis. You should use his uh, early game advantage as much as possible with the invades on the enemy jungle and uh, on the lane pressures. And that's exactly what Team Little Gun is doing. Wow, that's super good. Yeah, this is definitely a different story that we've seen in uh, game number one. I mean, some early aggression is going to work in their favor. With Martis picking up two kills, he's definitely going to be ahead of uh, Irad on the Lancelot. We are seeing this turtle spawn in the next two seconds, and you're already seeing Zara with the game plan to take this. He didn't have the best match with the Barat, but it's looking like a different story for him this time around. Yeah, but it's like too early to judge, like, you know, but it's a good start to like 1.5k gold lead already and working on, on that turtle. Ooh, and, and some now extra another kills. Kill. Yeah, decimation. He's been being punished for his curiosity. Yeah, and uh, curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> and Zara killed three cats so far. 3 0. <laughs> this time, he killed the bird. <laughs> curiosity <laughs> killed the bird. <laughs> That is true, because they do have that Kaja. And speaking of the bird, um, Kaja, Briss, that's two deaths that he's had so far. Definitely need to play a little bit more passive, especially being the roamer. He's kind of opening up the opportunity for a little Team Little Gun to have a massive advantage in the early phase. Yeah, but this Lancelot is uh, still dangerous, even though he's uh, kind of in a disadvantage here, level 5 against almost level 7, and uh, but still trying to fight for, for it, and it's pretty good to see, and now he's going to pay for his, for Ooh. this, like, uh, trying to still, I mean, trying to not give the, the steal of this Ursa to the Martis, but it, being punished for that. Team Little Gun is, seems like they reloaded. Yeah, and you're gonna see uh, Briss off screen. He's gonna catch Baybex. That's gonna be the first kill for RQ Hoshi. Irad finding his first death of the game. That is gonna go over to Ethan on the Ruby. Four to one lead, three kill lead for the side of uh, Team Little Gun, and now up by 2,000 gold. Some of those items popping up on the board as well. As you are seeing uh, the Hunter Strike uh, Scythe be picked up from the Martis for that additional pin and mobility, already being such an early aggressive jungler. But uh, look on the farm uh, table. The Beatrix is uh, dominating, actually, Ixia, on, with that uh, quite good gold lead at this point. And uh, there's going to be a deciding factor of the fight when uh, Beatrix is going to join the fight and maybe burst some somebody. Yeah, you see Baybex did pick up that Corrosion Scythe, so it'll be a little bit of slow. It's alongside the uh, Thomas on top of that, looks like Skylar is going for that Blade of Despair. I mean, I did see a Legion Sword over there, so that may be possibly what he's trying to build up. It's going to be a little bit of a higher pricey item to be able to pull off, but once he gets it, it'll definitely deal some massive physical damage. Next turtle has been spawned in, though, and it looks like... Uh, Zara is going to go in for it. He was able to take the last one and get a kill on top of it, and it looks like RQ Hoshi won't be able to contest. Yeah, they absolutely won't be able to contest, and the red buff is probably going to be pressured as well. Uh, I want to mention a good dodge, uh, the Ruby's ultimate on the Lancelot uh, second skill, uh, but didn't uh, quite resolve anything. And here yeah, is the pressure on the Ixia as well, and uh, being uh, slowly farmed down, and uh, now the RQ Hoshi are trying to come back using this disadvantage on the Ixia. Yeah, Ixia, I mean, 0, 2, and 0 right there. Definitely uh, needing to find a way to get their marksman online. Uh, kind of struggling <laughs> to find uh, the yes. rhythm so far. You're going to go ahead and see uh, on the bot side, though, Ruby going to go ahead and clear those minions. 4-2 to two so far. Team Lil Gun off to a great start in the early phase. RQ Hoshi now sitting on the back end. This may be an even series if they're not careful. They are sitting at match point, though. So if they find the Ooh. rhythm, it could be a game ended. But I'm offended for a two-man set. The Ethan drinks. finds Skylar. You are going to see them still battling it out inside of the Tier 1 turret. Thornrose going down. The dash in. But no Phantom wow, Execution to take down Ethan. Ethan initiation is so good. Just like Cho last game, he's kind of uh, vengeance. <laughs> uh, having his vengeance on this one. Uh, but... It, Prioritizing the most important target, which is Beatrix, ulting plus flicker and immediately follow up for all his team. And uh, this is a bad news Ooh. for RQ Hoshi, might be. Zara able to take down Briss, almost able to get another. The Nether Realm as a saving grace, keeping Genesante alive right there. But you're looking at Zara with a really good start. 4 0 2 on the Mortis. 
Yeah, that's exactly what you want to see on the Martis and uh, whew, let's see it. But uh, as you mentioned, as you mentioned, Ixia need to start to, to play with the gold and uh, she need to farm a lot because it's the only uh, side of the Team Lil Guns is not matching uh, with the other one, is the Ixia. Need to start farming, otherwise this domination not gonna... Uh, not gonna be there for a long time because it will be a point when Ixia need to like one shot people with her ultimate. Yeah, you're looking at a 4,000 gold lead so far for the side of Team Lil Gun, and that's increasing the further we go inside of this game. RQ Hoshi need to find a way to pump the brakes on uh, their momentum right now. As you are gonna see Zara take the next turtle with little to no contest, giving them a massive xp boost right now which means when it comes to these team fights you're going to see team little gun just do a little bit better especially with zara with how much he already has on his plate sitting at 5700 gold highest gold in this game for their jungler beatrix right behind him at 53 though definitely ahead of the ixia who's having a little bit of a harder time uh getting online but you are seeing the battle the invasion over the purple buff zara going in for it irad not going to be able to uh no he looks like he was able to get it with his uh retribution right at the last second yeah and the beatrix is pushing the split pushing the wave and immediately tp in back this is like exactly what she should do in this position of uh, not power <laughs> no no position of power here from Araki hoshi but uh, if they manage to hold up for like six seven minutes additional i mean not six seven minutes i mean basically it's one fight if uh, Team Lil Gun lose one fight, they might come back here, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, as the battle on the way, a siege for the tier 2 turn, the proxy of the lane. Massive damage goes out, Forbit takes down Brizara, gets another, finds Skylar. And now we'll be able to take this tier 2 turn on the bot side, but in the mid lane, pay attention to Irad, trying to go in, trying to find a trade. Bebex yeah, yeah, yeah. will find a turret off screen as well. That's exactly what they are doing in terms of like in aggressive defense. Like, you know, they uh, team little gun killing our Hoshi people, but uh, the Lancelot trying to even that out and uh, like split push, defend, don't let the, them get the objectives because of that kills. And uh, yeah, that's the uh, right thing to do to kind of uh, drag uh, the game a little bit, hold it for more minutes. Yeah, and right now, RQ Hoshi trying to hold off Team Lil Gun from claiming even more real estate on today's match. Off to a great start with a six kill lead and also up by 5,000 gold as this Lord spawns in. So far, we haven't been able to see Team uh, RQ Hoshi be able to take any of these neutral objectives. Team Lil Gun just getting everything they came for, not asking any questions and just uh, handling their business at every stage of the early game. Can we see RQ Hoshi turn this around? Divide judgment goes out. Skylar gets the kill, takes down Forbid. We just talked about this. The Kaja being the counter for the Lilia. Oh, and the Lord is being contested probably. Lancelot is kind of far away. And the second skill with the retribution gonna steal the Lord. It was so like I can saw it from the far away. Like, you know, he's like, oh, there's Lord there. Let me let me try to steal it. And like <laughs> and just took it. <laughs> Skylar, though, on the chase, he wants Zara. You are going to see Aizen try and kite him. A little bit of an overextension, and Aizen will be able to get the kill, but Abraham will shut down Zara. Phantom Execution in. Thorn Rose connecting Bebex. 15% HP will make his way back into the tier 2 turret. And now the Lord intact making his way down the mid lane. And you're looking at RQ Hoshi turning this game around. Team Low Gun wow. now on the defense. Aizen very low, forced to go back. Forbid may not be able oh. to get out of there. You are going to see uh, Arad going in, trying to get the kill. Not able to close the distance on Aizen as he makes his way back to the base. And down goes the Lord. Uh, Ethan was a little bit hesitating with his ultimate because he cashed Lancelot with his second skill. And he should ult immediately afterwards. But he, he ulted like a little bit longer. So it uh, opens up a window for the Lancelot to dodge with the second skill. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah, you see, he was definitely on the chase. It was funny watching Skylar <laughs> trying to chase down a kill, getting punished over there by Aizen, and then the same thing with uh, Iriad trying to find uh, Aizen on his way out. Neither side able to kind of close that distance. But so far, 10 to 5. Even though RQ Hoshi is behind in kills, they are now leading the way in terms of turrets, and the gold has almost equalized for both sides. Team Little Gun up by 1,000. Uh, but in terms of map control, it is now favoring RQ Hoshi. Yeah, I absolutely agree with this one. I'm just wondering why Team Lil Gun keep doing the same mistake. Like, 
they not focusing the heroes. They like going for these like 50-50 lords. I don't know. Ooh, but this match is not 50-50 with this engagement on the side of Skylar. We'll find Aizen on the 4v2. Ethan left by himself to pick up the pieces, and they may go in to take this turret. Ethan not really in a position to contest, and it looks like Skylar is going to seize this opportunity. Skylar already 2,000 gold ahead of Bebex. Yeah, and the double ultimate on the Beatrix just to follow up uh, Kaja's ultimate uh, Divine Judgment. And uh, <laughs> like so synchronized, like as uh, as soon as Kaja ult, uh, there are like grenades are flying in and the pistols <laughs> are already being loaded, uh, ready to follow up. And the super fast kill, no vengeance for Tamus because it's impossible to use while be being ulted uh, with uh, Kaja or Franco. And yeah, taking the full advantage out of that. And you are looking at the highest kills in the game so far, going over to Zara. Had a really good start on that Martis, now sitting 6 1 and 3 for the side of Team Logan. But on RQ Hoshi, even though they're not high on kills, their synergy is definitely coming alive as we are now officially in the mid game. They don't have the high mobility that we saw in game one, especially uh, with that uh, Benedetta rotating around and keeping Team Little Gun on their toes, but they're making up for it with their IQ. Concealed play has been called out though from the side of Team Little Gun, trying to rush in, trying to catch Genesante, but he puts on the skates and slides away, but hit over there by Ruby with the CC and massive damage going out. Mortar Coils from Zara. Trying to get a decimation off, Phantom Execution in. Irad will find Ethan, gets a double, shuts down Babex, a two for none trade. Gets that triple on his way to a possible Maniac, as <laughs> Octa will be able to find one as well. Forbid all by himself, trying to get away. RQ Hoshi on the chase, can they get him? No. He's gonna sandwich around, Irad not letting him go, showing no mercy. Black Shoes though, a massive, play to be able to escape the full team of RQ Hoshi as they're now going in for a possible game ender. They have minions and only one member to go through, but Ethan will spawn in time for some additional CC. Do they try and close it out here? I'm not sure if they can pull it off and it looks like they are now going to shift their focus onto this Luminous Lord. Wow, wow, what a turnaround, like, <laughs> and the, Lancelot was kind of reminding me of this game, like, checkers, uh, you call it, right? <laughs> when he was jumping on the <laughs> minions, it was like, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. I will say, Irad is thirsty for the kills. The way he's rotating around, the way he tapped over into oh, the inhibitor yeah. turret to try and box out Forbid from escaping, but the black shoes at the last second to wrap back around into the uh, inhibitor for the mid lane saved his life right there and avoided a full wipeout in a game ender. Uh, that could have been everything out for Team Lil Guns as they're currently sitting 0 to 1. If RQ Hoshi closes this game out with this Luminous Lord, it will be a 2 0 sweep and they will have a big advantage for Group Stage A. Yeah, Iradis definitely want to like taste, give them taste of the, their own medicine because of the early game, like every time is invading his buffs, every time like harassing him in the jungle and now he's going, they gonna pay for it. Yeah, Team Logan backs against the wall. Everything to lose right here if they're not careful. RQ Hoshi, Viva RRQ! as they are alive right now and doing well. 10 to 10 on the scoreboard, but down goes the Lord. Some great defense from Team Logan, but now stripped down to only the base crystal and no inhibitors. Yeah, RQ Hoshi being able to defend all of the attacks of the Team Lil Gun. Only three towers are down, and the mid lane, like most important tower, is still up. And uh, uh, RQ Hoshi maintain their composure and uh, uh, not being not nervous and under the immense pressure Team Lil Gun putting on them and uh, gathering their thoughts for this like final counter attack and they uh, did it quite good just like waited for some items I guess yeah, now they have all the lane synced. It looks like they're going to go in for the close. They don't have the Lord, but no worries. We have the minions and the damage. Massive play. Big on the fitted set, though. Babex will find Okta. Forbid takes down Bruce. A turnaround. Team Lil Gun on the defense. Phantom Execution out. You're going to look at Irad doing a quick 180. Not going in with what they came for. RQ Hoshi, a little bit of a miscalculated play right there. And Team Lil Gun able to turn it around. I mean, RQ Hoshi uh, damage every single target for like 20-30%, maybe even lower, but they should like... They was damaging everyone instead of like uh, trying to focus 
uh, priority. They thought they can kill all of them, but damage wasn't there in uh, when you put it like that on the every single person you can see around <laughs> you. And uh, yeah, now they go into defend, and the Team Little Gun has a small window to actually come back and maybe potentially five versus four somebody. But uh, Kaja is running straight from the base already. Ten seconds for the Lord, and it's going to be five of five on the Lord. Ooh, but the aggressive play, Dinasante caught in the middle, uses the winner Trunchian, but not going to be able to hold him off. Second saving grace, Immortality, Ooh. been procced, and he goes down. Zara didn't with the decimation, one member falling for RRQ Hoshi. And now you've seen some heavy focus in the mid lane. Luminous Lord spawned in, and Team Lil Gun with the advantage of numbers. Wow, insanely good, you know, the, the freeze into the immortality and on top of that uh, Faramis tried to ult but he actually like slipped a little bit and the ult didn't proc on him with the immunity effect. It might be enough to survive for the counter attack and the ultimate divine judgment goes into Martis and trying to follow up on Beatrix with the damage but it's not enough and uh, now Martis is gonna keep working on the Lord. I don't know if it's a good idea or not but Phantom Execution going mm. in trying to get the Lilia, but not gonna happen because of that ruby with the spoke on the drop against assassins is so good. Yeah, Irad did fall Ooh. though, so there's no retribution for RQ Hoshi. And now a possible opportunity with the numbers from Team Little Gun to close this game out. Octa gets a kill. Zora takes down Skylar. That's gonna be a two for two trade so far. Looks like the numbers have equalized. RQ Hoshi finding a way, finding a will. Burst will take down Forbid. Two more members left to go through. Make it one. Zora Immortality has been procced. May not be able to get out of there. Ringo order for the slow. Burst on his tail. Can they take him down? Octa will. He will fall. That's going to leave Genesante in the base trying to close it out. Ethan left to defend against the three-man team of RQ Hoshi looking for the 2-0 sweep. Aizen joining the party. Going to use that Cotter Infernal last minute. Trying to hold him off. 25%. 5%. Viva RRQ as they get the 2-0 sweep. Out from Indonesia, taking down Team Lil Gun from Mongolia in Group Stage A, Game of Futures 2024. Yeah, congratulations, RQ is uh, regular minions. Just regular minions, like, you know, when uh, Team Lil Gun, like, kind of forced in the fights, you can see Beatrix or Lancelot uh, just clearing up the waves on the, like, opposite lane. So, uh, Team Lil Gun get the kills, but they can do anything they can push anything because of these kills so it's just it's just like kills just kills not gonna do anything for you because you really want to like get the kills and get the map control get the kills get the like at least buffs uh, like and rq hoshi understand this concept and the team Lil Gun kind of not may, maybe they do maybe they understand but the tempo of the game is so high so it seems like it's uh, not uh, prioritizing uh, team Lil Gun it's just they just prioritizing kills and then doing nothing with the kills just like in this uh, moment look uh, March is going in three people stun and they gonna kill all of them but on the mid lane Lancelot is rotating to the mid lane just to clear up and don't let uh, them mid uh, their mid to fall down so the defense in terms of macro gaming are so much ahead on the RQ Hoshi than uh, Team Lil Gun. Yeah, definitely credits to being able to focus on these objectives, especially when under pressure. Because like we said, the early game, Lil Gun was looking stronger than ever. I mean, you look like with, they were going to kind of close this game out with ease, but they are able to hold on to their entire mid lane for the side of RQ uh, Hoshi. And I think that's what kind of kept them in there uh, alongside rotating around, like you mentioned, and taking some of these mid lane turrets uh, while the side of uh, Lil, Lil Gun was kind of focused on trying to go for the kills. Speaking of kills, though, as you are seeing about that 12-minute mark, this is where we started to see them turn it around. This is where RQ Hoshi came alive. Viva RRQ. Irad with the triple kill. Okta taking down Aizen. And then the battle for a possible siege trying to close this out. But this is some good defense uh, where they tried to kind of hold them from trying to close this game out uh, for the side of Lil Gun. You see the suppression go down. You see both teams fight it out. But a massive I'm offended for three-man set from Ethan to keep Lil Gun inside of this game. Yeah, and there's still not, uh, not n no damage for RQ. They tried to finish the game. They kind of 
didn't make it one one dead and they just retreat wait a little bit reload and even now they kind of like not winning not losing the fight but they uh having their composure and uh, just keep going keep going keep going and uh, keep doing right stuff and uh, team little god is being overwhelmed by the actions of the rq hoshi and don't know what to do yeah and speaking of actions actions speak louder than words we are seeing the mvp on the board octa with the Ferramis three two and eight stacking up those assists 22 percent damage dealt 557 gold per minute but it was really the power of the nether realm keeping rq hoshi alive inside of a lot of these engagements which made up a lot of the difference especially in that mid to late game when rq hoshi was able to turn this around great synergy overall and a well-deserved mvp on today's first series of the day ending in a 2-0 sweep it was definitely entertaining though i wouldn't say it was one-sided team low gun just need to work a little bit more on their late game uh, mm -hmm. to be able to close it out when they do have the massive objectives in their favor yeah absolutely agree and in, in particular in this game in particular they should help uh, their gold laner more just like you said they need to take like online <laughs> their uh, gold laner and they kind of like had this like i don't know rush like okay we're winning let's keep killing them like <laughs> instead of like <laughs> helping these like uh, pieces uh, on the board uh, to kind of work all and uh i don't know 14 percent damage on the gold laner that's not what you want to see and uh on the other hand uh, the cc actually is a top damage on the rq hoshi yeah genosanta both games insanely strong yeah you're right we got to see the cc in action from genosanta game one we got to see the uh benedetta with some flawless execution skylar though on the Beatrix did pretty decently. You're looking at mm -hmm. that 57% team participation. Make sure to do a lot of turret damage as well. 53% of the turrets were claimed from him in today's match. And also in the last game, he had a very high damage against the entire team of Team Little Gun with that Claude. Definitely showcasing some mastery at its finest in the gold lane. And kind of showcasing just how good RQ Hoshi is looking this time around for Game of Futures. Team Lil Gun, on the other hand, though, like we said, don't count them out yet. They still have another shot. Not off to the best start in the group stage, but hey, there's always another day, and that will be today as we'll be, we'll be seeing them continue to compete. Now, I will say, Baybex had a really hard time getting online with the Ixia. Uh, we saw him getting shut down mm -hmm. really often, even when Team Lil Gun had a huge advantage. Zara was going crazy with the Martis. I'm talking about mm -hmm. the dude had like nine kills. <laughs> <laughs> 